Welcome to I Love Stocks. Today we're going to talk about my little options challenge and we're going to go into 2021 with a new balance of $1,000. And I did make a trade on it Friday in my options challenge. And that was with Nile. Brought the balance up to $1,023.19. It was a fast little scalp. I started seeing weakness, so I got out of the trade. We got in at 267 out at 291 January 8th with uh, $24. So I added that to the count, and we're going to be talking about a little bit about that in my options challenge account. But I did start one. It's called Washboard Gems Options, and this is my seventh one that I've done. The last one I did in two months, I ran it up 800%, and I'll be looking at maybe taking this one and doing the same thing or even more. So let's get right into the charts. I'll be bringing today, we're going to be looking at TrendSpider. TrendSpider is offering a pretty good deal right now. They got a 50% discount. If you get in here before January 3rd at 1159, you're able to go ahead and get you that discount going. When you start your free seven day trial by 1159, you get 50% off. So let's go ahead and check it out for 12 months. And that's a pretty good little idea. It's a pretty good deal. You can get started on it. I'll be using the platform all this year. I just started using it. I've had it on. I've had it for a little while, but I've been so accustomed to toss, think or swim. I kind of wanted to clean up my charts a little bit, so I'll be still using uh, the trading platform, think or swim, and I'm going to be doing a lot of charting with TrendSpider. And I've kind of created me a little watch list here to the side. I've got right now. I've got my Bollinger Bands on here. I've got my volume bar, I've got the money flow index, and I also have down here at the very bottom my TTM squeeze that I've been trading with for over 15 years. And let's go ahead and look at the watch list and see what I have on here to start off the season with. I've got Visa, Tesla, I've got Nile, Blink, Apple, PayPal, Zoom, Spy, Facebook, Dash, and Airbnb. This will be a PDT rule, so I will be trading maybe three scalps a week along with maybe a swing every day if I can find me a good swing and usually I like to go ahead and scalp that uh, the next day unless I see a good run or I'm buying at a real good support level. I'm a technical trader and I trade off supports and pivot points and resistance levels. I like to buy at the low and sell at the high. And I usually take it for five days at the most. I have a five-day rule where if I see a five-day sell-off, I get interested in the trade. Or if I see a five-day run, I'm willing to go ahead and take my profit. But sometimes it goes to three days. It depends. It really depends on the news. Being in the now is always a subject to my decision-making. So let's go ahead and start off with Nile. I really like Nile. I've called it down here at this low support right around the $40 area. And we've run all the way up to 48. And let's go ahead and pull up the Fibonacci's. The Trend Spider has a lot of little tools over here to the left that you can use. And I use them quite a bit. For right now, we're going to use the Fibonacci. And I'm going to go ahead and start off with the top of this candle right here. And I'm going to bring it back down to the bottom part of this support level. Right there. That leaves me a little channel in here that I want to play with. So the bottom of that channel is right here at 46.79. I kind of like that area for the first support. I really do. I think it can pull back a little bit, but we've got uh, we've got uh, Nile Day coming up. That's going to be on the 9th, and so it should be bullish this week and then probably have a little pullback after that. If we do break resistance level, it's going to be right here at 49.50, and we did try to break that uh, Thursday. And she pulled back and left a reversed inverse hammer. It's still green. I think we can still pull up and break the resistance level. But if we get in here and it starts to sell off a little bit, I'll be looking at this first thing in the morning. Now on my options challenge, I'll be using the Tastyworks platform. And this is the trade that I made uh, Thursday to start off the challenge with. I got in at 267 and I sold it at 291. And I just bought one because I thought we were kind of up at a resistance level and it was the day before the New Year's. And one thing I did like about 
what happened on the New Year's Day or New Year's Eve is that we had a uh, nice close. It, it really closed nice. The market closed real nice. And I'll pull that up on the SPY here when we get back to Trend Spider. Just type in the ticker over here on the left. Or you can go ahead and hit your icon on your watch list if you have it on your watch list. And you can pull up the SPY. Now this is the daily, so I'm going to go to the one minute and show you this nice little run we had into close. I thought that was quite impressive. We did kind of leave with a, with a, uh, a red candle. A red candle, and this is... Um, a little, little scary to me because it's indecisiveness on both ends of buyers and sellers. So if it does pull back a little bit, you know, I can't see it going any lower than probably down to this lower channel right down here. I mean, I can see it going lower, but this 173.59 is going to be around my first support on the SPY. But it, we did end up with a nice little candle at the end of the day, and I sure liked the way that ran, ran came all the way down here from the bottom. Miss Vegas and I were pretty excited about the close that we had on Thursday. Let's go ahead and start off from the very top of the list. Well, actually, I'm going to go ahead and do Nile, because I was in Nile and talking about it. We're going to pull this back to the daily time frame. That's where we had it. And I might pull this back to the 20-day. But I do like it right here. Support levels are going to be this 46.79. And definitely down here, strong buy at 44.33. Resistance to break is going to be up here at this channel that I talked about, that 50, 49.70 area. Let's go ahead and draw a trend line in there. This is on the daily. So I want to bring this to the 20 day. And that's, you look at that at the one hour. There we go. That's a little bit better view of it. I when I'm when I'm looking at a trade, this is probably the first chart I go to is the yearly daily when I'm charting them up, and then I like to go ahead and go to the 20 day one hour. That gives me like a moving average of the 20 day. In this chart right now, I have the Bollinger Bands, I have the money flow, and I have down here the TTM squeeze. And I've been trading with the TTM squeeze for many years. But we did had nice little close into close. It did pull back to support level. I thought about getting back in the trade, but I decided to go ahead and wait, see what happens come Monday morning. We have three support levels, and I'm pretty so, pretty solid about it. I'm going to adjust this bottom one a little bit down here, right around the 42. And I'm doing that on the 20 day. I want to make sure that I got this right. Let me go ahead and pull up the trend line right there. So we got a support level right here at 42.50. That's going to be my little support level. You can go into properties. You can change the colors if you like. And that's the one I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it red. And I'll be done with it. That's going to be a strong buy if we do pull back to that 42.51. Now the resistance to break is going to be up here at the double top. So if we pull back first thing in the morning. And I'm able to get into this trade right at open on a pullback. I'm going to go ahead and take it up and run it up to the triple top and hopefully that triple top will break and we can get it up to these new resistance levels and they're going to be the next ones are going to be I'm going to think probably right around 50 76 50 50 and then we've got this 53 50 area and then long right around the 54 54 50 and that's Nile the next one I want to be talking about in the challenge is one that I really like and that's Tesla this was my favorite trade of the year last year, along with Nile. And I, did, I trade this about every chance I get. And we're going to pull this back down to the 20. We're gonna, right now we're on the 20-day, one hour. So I've got three different support levels down here that I'm looking at for a strong buy. No lower than 677.49, 682.83, and then that 695 area, 694. If that holds, we're going to retrace back up to 715. That'll be a nice little $20 scalp if we get into that trade right there. And if we can break past 715 on Tesla, we're going to go ahead. Now, this is a stock that the bears are pretty adamant about. And the shorters went 
are starting to sh they short this thing when they think that we're at a top and they'll try to pull it back and a good example of what happened to it Friday I started asked the room I said you know are we bullish or bearish and I didn't get too many answers in the room I knew that we were going to be bearish that we were ready for a pullback and I'll show you the reason why let's go um let's go to the one minute We started consolidating here to the side for a very long time. So we we're starting to get a little bit of decisiveness. We were showing a little trickster on this one though. We we're getting them higher lows. And when you do that, you usually want to stay into the trade. But once we broke past that pattern and that 200 started crossing down, that's when I was time to exit the trade. Now this is a, uh, the, I mean that 20 days started pulling down and this is my 200 right here. And when she started pulling down inside the Bollinger Bands, that was time to exit the trade. And she went ahead and pulled on back to almost to that lower support that I had. I called it out in the room at 695. And we hit the 698 area. And then she bounced on back up. I love trading this trade. I like looking for candle indicators. And a good thing about Trend Spider is you can go into the patterns. And you can pull out what kind of pattern you want to see in the chart. Right now I've got hammers and I have the morning star. I like playing off that morning star. We had one right here and on the bottom. If I can find one on the bottom and you can see them on the daily. You can see them in any time frame, but they're different in every time frame. You know, I also like the three new black crow. I'm going to go ahead and put that in here too. And I'm going to put in the white soldiers because I can play reversals off either one of these trades too. It's getting a little fogged up right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this off and have a better clear picture on it. So this one here, like I said, we've got that low support. Let's go back to the hour on Tesla. And this is going to be in my challenge account. If I can scalp this three times a week, I'll be pretty happy. So we've got low support here at 677.49 to hold, 682.83. The first one here at 695, 694.79 with a resistance to break of 715. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Visa. Visa's had a very nice run here in the past week, and she's starting to consolidate to the right. Now I think this can pull back to support again right down here. Let's go ahead and check out a little bit bigger picture on it on the 20 day see we went sideways in a sideways channel forever and we did break out of that channel so what I want to do is I'm going to draw a Fibonacci from right here and it also this this also has an automatic Fibonacci setup on it that you can watch it definitely says it's way overbought so I'm not going to be too interested in looking at that but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw our own In fact, let me see here. We're going to drop from right up here down to the bottom of this channel. Right there around 204. Stops perfect right there. See that it right there at the 786. There's going to be a lot of people that use the Fibonacci. I'm going to be using it more. I've used my extended trend lines for many years, and I believe they're a little more accurate than the Fibonacci's themselves. But many traders don't trade off my trend lines. They trade off the Fibonacci's. So I want to try to regulate the regularity of trading with them. We have a low support down here at 215. I'm going to go ahead and draw a trend line across to it. And this we're talking about Visa for your first support. If I was drawing my trend lines, that's where I would think this thing could pull back to right at 216. And that would be a strong buy. Your first support would be off the Fibonacci line right here at 216.98, right around 217 area. Now, if this 216 doesn't hold, it can pull back to this lower lower branch down here. And that's almost a 50% pullback if you talk about 212.53. So let's go ahead and draw a trend line right there. Now, I'm putting these in red because they're solid to me. And then when I see that red line that I'm putting on here, 
that's the trend line. That means I'm really thinking about getting into the trade. Okay. Well, oh, that didn't put that right at the right spot. Let's go ahead and erase this. And I want to get in here a little bit lower. Well, no, I kind of like that there. The 212.56 area. Right there at 212.61. I think that would be like my third support level or my, my strong, strong buy. That's the pivot point into the channel. And that looks like a pretty good 50% retracement from the high from the bottom. So we've got your first support at 2617, 216. Then we got the 21438, and then a strong buy at 212 with resistance to break here at 22030. And if it decides to go ahead and break that double top, we'll take her up a lot higher, maybe to 225. There's a lot of people that are bullish. A lot of analysts and a lot of institutional buyers are bullish on Visa into 2021. The next one we're going to look at is going to be Blink. Blink I like. I always say don't blink. Let's go ahead and erase this. You can remove all emanations at once. And if you want to, you can go ahead and remove the trend lines. Remove all horizontal lines. So we're going to start fresh with this one here. I'm really excited about this trade also. We've had a real nice run on it. Now she's created a pennant flag, and we're getting ready to squeeze. It could squeeze up or it could squeeze down. I think the cost is built it in right now, and we could start to see it. just a little bitty pullback to maybe right here, right around the $39 area. And I'm going to draw that trend line in there at $39. Right, right there. 39 actually a little bit higher than that. I'm going to go ahead and go with 40. If it pulls back to 40, we can retrace back up. That means we're just pulling back and profit takers coming in and hitting the support. Or we could flag out. And I see that right there. right about there it could go either way on this one here but we're right there on that at closing so we're getting ready to squeeze it could either go up or it can go down you know this is blink and they build the charging stations for the ev car department and this is on my ev car watch list sector and i've been really bullish on this trade for a long time ever since it was down here at 10 bucks and remember mind you this was only 20 days ago 18 days ago so she's had a wonderful run, just a 500% run, all the way up to 50 bucks. We need to consolidate. I think a good pullback is due. And if we do get in on the good pullback, low strong buy is going to be right down here at that $35 area. I can't. That's where we had this top at right here. And that's where we're going to go ahead and put this trend line. Right there at that $30, $35 area for a very strong buy. Your first support. And then we're going to find a little pivot point area in here. Let's go ahead and put color that in right there. And I'm going to try to find me an equilibrium in the middle of this channel. I'm bullish on every one of these stocks that I mentioned. I like to buy at support and sell at resistance. I'm a technical trader and I do trade on the money flow and I do trade on volume and momentum. So I'm thinking low, low support here at 35, around 37, and then this $40 area for your three supports. Resistance to break is going to be right up here, right around 45. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw me a Fibonacci. From here to where I think right here is. And if we can keep it in this channel right here, that'll be great. That means we can run this stock back up about five bucks to 40, 47.97. And there's going to be a little pivot point in the middle of that channel. And let's draw that in right here. This is Blink. I, you know, I like Blink. 
This is going to be on my options challenge. And I think that pivot point resistance to break is going to be at 45.79. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be Apple. Apple's getting in the EV car list, watch list. And we did kind of find support above this last channel we had, which makes to me, gives to me that it's a pretty strong support. And we could see a retracement back up to this different level up here, right around the 134.25 area. That's and then maybe, maybe get up here to the next one right around the 35.58. Go ahead and draw these two lines in. So I'm thinking, like I said, right here. And then right there at that 35.58 area. With strong buy, I'd like to see hold. Is this channel right down in here? So if we can, if we can hold, whoop. if we can hold this channel, that'd be great. A little gap up, so that solid support. Let me erase that. I'm gonna go a little farther down. Go a little farther down with it. In fact, let me do this. Get in here with the trend line. Damn. Gotta make it right. Here we go. Try it one more time. The number is 129. And I just don't want to get down there. So I'm thinking that 129 is going to be the spot. Let's go ahead and pull this back up. Right there. So we got two supports. That This one right here at 131.23. And then that last one right down here at 129.50. If that holds, that will be a good deal for Apple. And then Apple's resistance level to break is going to be these two lines, one at 134.20 and 135.58. PayPal, I think we're at a bottom on PayPal. We started to soup up, scoop it up a little bit at, at, at that lower support. Let's bring this to the one day. Well, no, let's keep it here. I want to go ahead and draw one more trend line right here for a solid buy. That's at 229.93. That'll be, I want that to hold. If that doesn't hold, we can take it, it can fall back down here right around the 224 area. That's PayPal. But I think we're going to hold and reverse back up. This is a bullish trade for me right now. And we're going to draw some Fibonacci's on this thing. Get this out of the way. Right up here, the double top couldn't break. And then we'll bring it on down to this bottom part right here. And that's going to be the resistance channel to get into. And that's going to be between 235 and 238. If we can get past 238, we'll work up to the next resistance levels and try to break a triple top. Or she'll pull back to this 229.74 and bounce up and use this as a resistance of 235. Zoom. Zoom's had a pretty hard sell-off. I think it just can keep dropping, but I'm not quite for sure on it. So we're going to bring this to the yearly, put it on the day, and suck it up. There's the yearly chart. We did break a critical support level, which was right in here, right at 371, and she dropped all the way down to this. So we've got a gap, and that's right here at 325. Let's go ahead and draw that trend line in here, right there right around 325 area and bring it maybe bring it back up to resistance level up here if she decides to go ahead and reverse and we might as well accept that tele, um, telecommunications virtual communications with businesses is going to continue it was on its path to do that but with covid it made it stronger than ever it brought it up 
a decade, 10 years. So that's how fast it moved. It's like overnight. I do believe we are turning into a gig economy and that people will have a little bit more leisure and they won't have to worry about that hustle and bustle of getting up, putting on makeup, getting yourself ready for work. I mean, that's an hour and a half, some people's day. It could be two hours if you have to really transit quite a ways, use the bus system like, you know, in the big cities. So it's going to be a change of life and big companies are going to adjust to it. There is going to be people coming back to work because they'd like that, you know, person to person contact. I'm a true believer of it myself, but also times change and we're into a new era. It's going to be a new economy. This happens not quite often. It happened during the Carter years after Carter was out. And I do believe that we are in the roaring twenties again. And we're just going to, it's going to just be a whole different change, a whole different economy. So Zoom is going to be a big part of that along with the tech sector. So I'm still going to be bullish on tech. I'm still going to be bullish on EV cars. Let's go ahead and drop a Fibonacci down here to the bottom line down here. And we'll kind of get some kind of idea of what the market's thinking and people are thinking. We'll just bring it on down to this gap. We'll make it shy of it right there. So Zoom can pull back to this lower support level. And I'm going to give these three low supports. We did, we're about to the pivot point of that channel. And that'll go right down in here. Right there. Right around 275.69 area is going to be your solid support. If it gets down to 275. If we start seeing a downtrend on this, I could buy some puts for a swing or maybe just scalp. I would scalp it. I don't think I would swing it. It would have been better, better to swing it up here at the $4 level. But now we're at 337. We're just going to see how this stock reacts Monday. Then we've got Facebook. Facebook's had another kind of you know tough year we are starting to build a flag as you can see that's a pennant flag and she's getting ready to squeeze too any sharp sell-off on this i could see a nice little rebound back up that's facebook dash i called this out at a high you can see she's pulled back ever since and i hit my target of 138 last Thursday and she bounced up off that 138 we have a spinning top right here and if we build another candle above this if we start building a candle and support above this here spinning top I'm gonna to go ahead and take the trade see if it breaks past 144 if I can get it past 144 I'll run it on up to resistance levels that's dash and then the final one that I have on the list is Airbnb I'm excited about this trade too I called the pullback to right around 120. We did hit that area and then we bounced on back up. At 125 area, we did hit that one, almost hit that 120. So now we found an equilibrium. I found a little support level here right around 145. Now anything below this is going to be a strong buy. Anything above it is going to be resistance levels. The first one is going to be right down here right around 142. So what we're going to do is we're going to build us a Fibonacci on this one too. And we're going to start with the body of the candle. And we're going to hit the body of this last candle. Right about in there. So we're, this is going to be the pivot point in that channel. As you see, it is the pivot point in this channel. Right there, right around the 146 area. So it could either go up or it could either go down. I'm bullish on Airbnb into 2021. Definitely bullish on this stock. And it'll be like another another Tesla to me. Because I just like the, the idea that people are going to be moving out. We're going to have a new gig economy. A lot of people are going to be working from home. They want to go visit somebody. Rent them a spot over and visit their mom somewhere. Or some, some friends. Or want to go to a city and still be able to work remotely from their computers. So I do believe this is going to be a big stock into 2021. I wouldn't, I'd probably sit back up here at 170. You know, so if you're get, thinking about getting in the trade, you might want to start out small on a dip 
if you, especially if you hit this 142 and run it back up and then swing it maybe long to 170 for a double top or scalp it on the way up and that's going to be airbnb well that's it for the options watch list i'll be doing these once a week i'll be talking about my challenge and i'll probably be doing updates also on the challenge itself i've done seven of them and i've been successful at all seven but i've not really hit the empire of saying hey i made a hundred grand so my goal this year is to keep this going all year long and see if i can get to that hundred grand level depends on the market last year was a excellent year a lot of my friends become millionaires last year and i was just overwhelmed i didn't make it there but i did okay but i'm just got to learn a couple things this year i think to really improve my trading pattern and that's to hold trades longer and to get out of trades that don't work because i've took probably about four thousand dollars in losses on trades that i held and if I would have, I mean, held that we're going down, that we're negative, and if I would have just took the trades that that I was bullish on, I could have probably tripled the income that I made. And there would have been just a couple good plays out of the deal, but still yet. I mean, the market pulled all the way back down to that low level of 20000 and we're up here at thirty above 30000 right now. I mean, do the math. It was a great V recovery. I, don't, I think that was probably, you know, we saw one back during the uh, Bush Obama years. And then we saw it with the COVID. And we saw it during the Clinton era. At the end of the Clinton era where Greenspan came out and said the market was irrational. I believe it's irrational right now. And that's why tech's pulling back a little bit. But we're also going to have a nice rebound off them stocks. So always remember, I love stocks. Follow us on Twitter. We do have a link on Twitter. Miss Vegas posts alerts on here. She's a wonderful trader when it comes to money flow and breakouts and following the trend. She's spot on. And then we're going to go ahead and go back to the website. We do have our stock twits. If you're not a member of the room, you can always follow stock twits. Both of us are on here. All you got to do is hit that icon. And also remember that Trend Spider is having a special right now until the 3rd. You go ahead and get this thing half price for a whole year. I like it. I like how, especially for beginners, if you want to learn uh, patterns and chart patterns and, and technical analysis, this can do it for you. I mean, you can pull up the chart patterns. There you got. See right there. We got a little hammer right here. It popped up right on the screen. So that's telling it's a red one. It could pull back, but it closed. If it closed above a little bit higher, I think this would have been a thicker, thicker skull right here, a thicker body. I think we could have a nice little breakout on it. But that that's what I like about this. Even, you know, then you can go through here and there's all kinds of them. There's all kinds of different indicators that you can use. If you want to go ahead and use the indicators, you can go ahead and, and you got all kinds of different alert systems over here that if you wanted to learn them, it's like the Bollinger Bands. I got the Bollinger Bands in here. I've got my simple moving averages in here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and erase one of these. This one right here, I'm going to take it out because I got two of them. It's simple as that. It's easy to use. We've got the candle range. We've got average true range. We've got the awesome oscillator. Get the TTM squeeze in here, get the gap snake. So there's all kinds of little technical tools you could be using in the setup. It also has a, a learning. It also has a, a market scanner where you can scan different, different. Um, let's go ahead and find one here. Let's see what the spider scan does. Well, no. Well, we'll talk about that at a later date, but it, it does have a nice scanner and it'll pull up and then you can check your, your data on it. Like I said, I'm just now, it has an automatic Fibonacci set up if you want to use that. And then plus you can create your own watch list. So this is an all good around tool for a beginner and for experienced traders. I'm experienced, but I'm still learning. We're always learning, always. Always remember, 
I love stocks. Keep up with my challenge. And I think this will be it. And then I'll do one of these videos every weekend. And then I'll do updates on a few tickers during the weekday. I love stocks. Thank <laughs> you.